And we are getting down to the end. Jesus has, has talked about heading towards Jerusalem, that he, he was going to be betrayed, that he was going to be killed. He's laid these things all out. And in that reflection that we have, and so this morning, we're going to talk about a man you probably know. You know, it's interesting because you talk about some of the folks in the Bible. There are some names that you may not be familiar with. Uh, There may be Bible names that you cannot pronounce. Actually, when we were in school, uh, one of our professors, we're going through some of the Old Testament, and, you know, the names that are this long and just alphabet soup, and... uh, and our professor told us, look, when you read these things, just read it with confidence because the people you read them to, they don't know how to say it either. So just say it with confidence. But there are a few names that people know. There are names that even the world knows. It's interesting, when I talk about the name Judas, what comes to mind? Uh, Sunday nights we're going through and showing the, the chosen. Uh, I think is it season four is just about ready to be coming out, and so once it kind of goes out, we'll, we'll probably do that again on Sunday nights and show it uh, next door. Um, and so I think it was like the first two seasons, you know, the disciples are doing these things, and Judas wasn't around, and then so finally season three, uh, Judas shows up, and I was like, <sighs> right? I mean, he just I was like, oh, boo, right? And. Uh, yeah, I know it's all, you know, it's a TV show. It's just loosely based on the scriptures. And I know all, I know it's not real. But like they brought Judas in. I was like, he's one, he's that, right? Don't you guys know who he is? They didn't listen to me. But it is that gut reaction of, of someone who just betrayed our Lord. And I think that, that just resonates with us. Because here was Judas, one of the twelve, who just stabbed Jesus in the back. Right? And I think that resonates with us because I think in our lives we've had people who we thought we trusted. Right? You know, some of you are more on guard than others. I, I'm one who kind of wears my heart in my sleeve, and that's a dangerous place to wear your heart. And you know, build relationships. And I remember in, in one of the churches I was at, and uh, we we're talking about an issue, and I, and I and I was sharing kind of what I was going through. You know, and these are men that I had served with for at least five, six years at that point, and we're gathered around the table, and I just kind of poured out my heart. And one of the deacons looked at me and goes, "You need a friend to tell them to." And I was like, I thought I was. You know, and I was like, oh. oh. You have people that will gossip and talk about you behind your back. So I think the idea of betrayal is something that resonates with all of us because I think we've all have been there. Matthew 26 starts off in verse 14. There's then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot. Boo, hiss, all right? Went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? Talking about Jesus. And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. And it's funny because we we read through the Gospels and Jesus had his disciples and they were all there uh, ministering, serving together. You know, I... funny because I, I was sharing once I said I imagine you know the 12 disciples and Jesus hanging out and you know there wasn't a western union or western union no uh, hotels along the way and uh, you know there were all these places so often they would be out around the campfire and, uh, and I, I made a comment I said I imagine you know they laughed and they joked right I mean guys you've been out right I mean you get out there and guys are just ruthless with each other. And, and that's how we show our love, right? You know? and, uh, and, and so I just imagine the disciples doing that and Jesus being along. And uh, I had a lady come up to me and, and she goes, well, you're being disrespectful. Jesus never laughed. I was like, I don't think so. 
And Judas blended right in with the rest of them. And, and it, read this. I mean, it just, it, to me, if you take yourself without, if you're not familiar with what takes place, right? I mean, from the get-go, you read Judas, I knew what was going to happen, right? Um, but you read this through, and all of a sudden, Jesus was in conflict with, with the religious leaders, but you didn't see this really internally. And for him to turn around, and Judas went to them, to the enemy, and said, how can I betray him? How can I turn him over? What will you give me? And he said, for 30 pieces of silver. Now, 30 pieces of silver is significant because this was the price of a slave. Just a male slave, a, a common in the Roman world, probably almost half the population were slaves. So it wasn't a special price. It wasn't, you know, twist my arms and, and highball. And it's not like, oh man, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll sell it out for the right price. This was just really nothing. It really shows Judas's heart. Seeking out an opportunity for not much. And so in reading this passage, you know, uh, saying, man, we, let's talk about Judas and we'll, we'll, we'll get him and we'll rake Judas over the coals. And, and the more I read in, the more the Lord just impressed on my heart of, I need to guard my own heart. Over the years, how many Pastors and ministers have fallen because of sin. How many have walked away from the faith? Right? How many, how many people do you know who have just walked away from church? Are living a life that really aren't even reflecting the fact that they believe in Jesus, let alone love him. Celebrities, stars, politicians seem to be leaving the faith at record numbers today. And it's like, man, am I that much better than Judas? And I think that's what we kind of say, right? Well, I never would. I would never do this. You know? I love the Lord. I, I've served Him. I've ministered for Him. Surely I would never fall away. Can I tell you something? The Bible tells us to look in the mirror. Because lest we fall. And the first thing we need to realize, you know what? It could be me. And then you say, well, no, right? No, no, you know, you know all right, Pastor, you know, that's, that's like the Judas and that's these other guys that will walk away from God. And I think today we look at really the choice we have as our world is shifting. Our, our world is going in a direction that's just immoral. The decisions are, are I'm going to be stark with you, are, are demonic in what's taking place. And I believe you see that. And if we see this going through the line between serving God and and accepting the world's way is, is so clear, right? I mean, it used to be it was kind of muddy. And I think a lot of Christians kind of straddle the fence because it's like, okay, I can have one foot, right, in the, in the world, and I can have one foot with God because the gap didn't seem that great. But what's happened? Right? It's gone further and further. Now, this is as far as I'm going to go because I'll hurt myself. But the division has become so great that really... Where are you going to stand? There really isn't a whole lot of middle ground today. And to realize that my heart is often prone to wander. Peter, right? It's, it's interesting because you tell Judas, you're like, boo, hiss, right? Oh, that traitor. Uh, and Peter's like, oh, wow, Peter, right? Wrote and ministered and served and loved Jesus. And it's funny because he came up through and, and Jesus at one point said, one of you will deny me. And, and Peter was like, not me, Lord. Right? Everyone else may leave you, but not me. And Jesus says, uh, before the night is over, you're going to betray me. And guess what? Under the pressures of this world, you know him. I don't know him. And the Lord denied him. I mean, he denied the Lord. 
And we need to be cautious in our lives to realize that, look, it's not me that hangs on to God, but God hangs on to me. If it was left on my own, I would wander. The Bible talks about leaving the 99 to save the one. We talk about the sheep. Right? And I'm like, you ever had a pet that just wandered off? We have a little shih tzu. And uh, good thing he's cute. Because he's a brat. And uh, a couple years ago, he you know, got Lyme disease. And then he got, because of that, they gave him medicine. And that blew out his pancreas. So now he's diabetic. So the guy has issues. You know, a few months after that, he lost his eyesight. So now he's blind, diabetic. And, but he doesn't know any of this. So... I'm outside, have him in the yard, open up. He goes, runs outside, right? And he doesn't know. And, and he, all of a sudden, I'm like, he's gone. I mean, literally, I turn around, and within five minutes, he's gone. I'm like, where is he? He's white. He should stick out. Where is he? And now, if you guys know, we live up here on Church Street, and uh, there's a, a tree line. There's a pretty substantial tree line. with it's nasty to walk through there. He had wandered into there, got out on the other side, and got onto the main road. Right? And so I'm looking around, and I don't want to go inside and ask my wife, have you seen the dog? That's, that's a whole, whole, that's nice for trouble. So I'm looking around, calling him. He's just, and he's just wandering around on Church Street. Just la, 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 la. Right? He's just wandering. He has no clue where he's going, but he does it anyways. And I'm like, Jesus talked about the, you know, the sheep, and the, and the one sheep who gone, keeps wandering off. And I'm like, you know what? If I was left with my own devices, that would be me. Right? I mean, I could be pretty ignorant and pretty stupid and stubborn sometimes. Right? Just go for a trip. I can be lost, yet I still kind of know where I'm going. Right? Now, praise the Lord for Google, because I would never pull over and ask directions. Somehow I don't feel like it's bad asking Google, hey, Google, where's home? Right? But I'd be the one who would wander off. I'd be the one who would stumble off the path, if I was left on my own. And I realized that. And so in that, Lord, I need you. I need to keep my eyes on you. I need to watch for you, because I'll just wander off. La, 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 la. Look at this. Paul told the Corinthians that this morning, he says, now all these things happen to them as an example. What he does just prior to this, he talks about the Old Testament, and talks about Israel, and how here they were, being led through the wilderness, and time and time again, they would rebel. Right? Time and time again, they would do the wrong thing. And they had the presence of God right there. Right? And so these things are written as our example. Upon whom the end of the age has come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Some of you have been around church a long time. Can I tell you something that may shock you? There are Christian idiots out there. Right? I don't know why you're all looking at me. But, uh, you know. but there are. And if I'm not careful, you know what? I'll be become one of them. I'll become just like those other hypocrites if I'm left on my own. I get judgmental and judgy. Sometimes I think I'm better than other people. Now I'm thankful none of you ever wrestle with thoughts like that. Yet when I get into the Word, He tells me, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. That He loves me not because of me, because I am not lovely. He loves me because He wants to love me. Right? And I, we all know Christians and, and churches that have gotten this mentality that we're just it. Right? We're God's chosen people. Oh, God's so privileged to have me on His side. No. And in here, humility of realizing that I would just wander. I would be a Judas left of my own. So would you. When push comes to shove, am I standing? If I do, it's not because of my own strength, it's because of Him. 
And when I stumble and fall, he forgives. Peter denied the Lord. And we see the Lord after his resurrection restores Peter. I'm so thankful he forgives and, and loves. Right? He's a merciful God. Why? Because I need mercy. You need it. And can I tell you something? I, I, I think... If we can humble ourselves, I think more people would come to the Jesus that we love because sometimes we're in the way. If I'm just being honest. Of course, not you. I'm talking about myself because you don't have that problem, right? James tells us, Blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he is approved, he will receive a crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. There are a lot of temptations in this world, and they're everywhere. Right? I mean, especially nowadays. If, if you have one of these, there's temptation right there everywhere. Right? I mean, there's not any things you're looking for that pop up. and say, hey, click me, click me. I mean, I remember growing up, like, the real evil of the day was like, as a kid, I remember walking through the grocery store and he had all the tabloids. Right? And I remember being a, a, a kid look, looking through and there's a, you know, kind of a risque picture or there was the, the bat boy who went through the White House. It was like, oh, what's all this? Right? All the gossip. And I remember as a kid standing there kind of soaking that all in. Right? And my mom was like, don't look at those. I'm not. Right? Look over the counter and try to see the Sports Illustrated, right? But it used to be you always had to go out for these things, and now it is spoon-fed to you, whether you're looking for it or not. Temptation is everywhere. Temptation of the world is, is draws us in. Now, I want to be clear. Temptation itself is not sin. Jesus was tempted, yet without sin. Right? So to have that temptation, because sometimes I think we confuse that, because I, I feel like if I'm tempted, oh man, man, I might as well already sin. Right? Because I wrestle with something, and your wrestle is different from mine. Right? So I, I can't judge you in your, your struggle, because I got my own. Right? So we've got to be clear on that. But temptation itself is not sin. James goes on. It says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when sin is des desire has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it's full grown, brings forth sin. We see this progression. What happens is we are tempted, and then we make a place for it. Right? We see something, and we, we look a second time. We go back and check it. Or maybe we do it once, and then we... Right? And so we, we start making... What happens is we start... Inwardly, we make a place for it. We give that, that whatever that is, that temptation, we give it a, a place in our heart. Then what happens is, once it's in our heart, then we start thinking about it. Right? And I think this is one of the big deceptions, because in our world today, we're pushing so much into our kids. Oh, they'll, they'll find it anyways. What we're doing, we're dumping a bunch of garbage into their heads, right? We're, we're, you're watching, you're viewing, you're listening, you're consuming all these things, and it is poured into you, and now it's got a hold on you. So we see this progression, right? You're tempted, but then you give into it. You give into that desire, right? You haven't done it, but now you're thinking about it. Oh, I'll drive by that again. Oh, I'll go to the site again. Oh, I'll just peek at this, right? And all of a sudden now it, it's kind of just germ starting to grow in you? I imagine that happened to Judas. Whatever happened, we, we don't know exactly what took place in his life, but in here we see this, right? It, it, it had to have grown. It must have a, a, a hold on him to finally, eventually, he gave in. But sin starts in the heart. And then, right, desire, and then we're enticed. And then desire is conceived. What? Then now, all of a sudden now we, we do it. A couple of years ago, I ran into a lady at, uh, at the hospital. We were in a waiting room, and um, the lady was older than I was, and she, there was a little kid running around. And I made the big mistake. I said, oh, is this your grandkid? She goes, no, this is my daughter. I was like, oops. 
She goes, yeah. She goes, I just met this guy, and she just happened. Now, I'm not the brightest bulb, but it didn't just happen. There's a whole process. I won't get into it, right? There's a process of how this happened. And sometimes we're like, oh, no, all of a sudden, this sin popped in my life. No, it didn't. Somewhere along the line, there was a seed, and you fostered it, and now it's come out. And then sin, once you do it, it gets a hold of you. And sin brings for, and birth the sin. And sinful grown brings death. We see that progression in our lives. But it all starts with that harboring within your heart. And that's why the Bible says confess our sins, right? Once you have that, once you have that, Lord, turn it over to you, right? Nip it in the bud. I was going to do a Barney Fife, but I don't know how many of you guys know who that is. Nip it in the butt. No, okay. Um, right? But stop it. The sooner you do that, the sooner you confess it, the sooner you turn from it, the easier it is. Because the further down that road it comes, it gets more of a hold on you. You know what I'm talking about. Proverbs tells us to keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Right? Keep your heart. Guard your heart. One of the things I want to tell you, young people, guard your heart. Be careful what you let in. You know, I didn't always do the right thing. And as a young man, there are images that I looked at. I was a teenager. Pictures that I looked at. Every still, once in a while, if I close my eyes, I have an image that pops up. I can't remember what I did yesterday, and yet somehow an image from 40-some years ago will pop in there. Guard your heart. Guard it. I used to always use the illustration of brain tacos. I, I think I probably talked about that. My brother took me to a, this little Mexican place. And uh, you know it's good when they don't speak English, right? I was the only green. Well, my brother and I were the only gringos in the place. We go in there, and he orders for me. He spent many years down in South America, so he orders for me. And he comes out in these little street tacos. And I love hot sauce and tacos and all that. So he brings out these three little street tacos. And I said, what is it? He goes, just eat it. And so I did it, and it was great. Right? The texture was like a little... A little spongy. I said, well, what is that? He goes, it's beef brain tacos. And they were good. Like I said, they have a kind of a spongy chew to them. I was like, oh. And it was funny, you know, and here it is, it's been several years later. But every once in a while, I have a hankering for beef brain tacos. Right? How many are with me? And for the record, oh, we got one hand went up. All right. Right? And, and the reason why is because you never tried one. Right? I've tasted it. My, my taste buds have exploded with pleasure of the beef brains in my mouth. But now I know what it's like. And you can't get a good beef brain taco in Maine. Maybe you can. I don't know. <laughs> but right? I, I, but because I've tasted it, I know. And therefore, it's got a place in me. I, I say all this because fill that in with whatever temptation you have, right? You'll never become an alcoholic if you never have that first drink. You, you'll never become a drug addict if you don't take that first dose, right? You'll, somewhere along the line, you, you open yourself up. So guard your heart. Guard it. And because we look at this, and I'm not immune, right? Be careful of saying, I'm not immune. It won't happen to me. Because guess what? It can. Timothy says this, and now the Spirit expressly says that in later times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Right? One of the things to watch out for in your life is one, open that door. The second thing is be careful that when the Holy Spirit prods your life and you feel that conviction and you keep saying no, you can become callous. Right? Christian, one of the worst things that you can feel in your life when you no longer feel the conviction of God in your life. 
it can happen to you. And somewhere along the line, Judas hardened his heart. That voice in you, you you no longer listen to it. Let me tell you one more thing here. Then, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace, lest any root of bitterness spring up, causing trouble. And by this, many become defiled. A root of bitterness. Be careful. Don't let your heart become bitter. Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you've been rejected. Maybe you look at your life, you know what? This is not what I signed up for. Right? I remember one time we were going through some things and I remember locking myself in a room and this is my prayer. Really spiritual. I said, Lord, stop this ride I want to get off. I never felt that. And it's easy for us to become bitter. The problem with the root of bitterness is it doesn't stay there. It grows and it will consume. Don't become bitter. And I imagine Judas somewhere along the line. I don't know. There's speculation that maybe Judas wanted Jesus to take the throne, remember? And Jesus wasn't doing that and they thought he was going to take over. So maybe he thought if I force Jesus into the situation. But things weren't working out like he thought it was going to. I wonder if Judas became bitter. Continue on in Matthew 26. It is now on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Where do you want us to go to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city of a certain man and say to him, Teacher, says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. And when evening had come, he sat down with the twelve. And now they were eating. He said, Surely I say to you, one of you will betray me. Life is going on. Passover is coming on. And Jesus sends his disciples, Go prepare the room. And we see all this. Now we just have this bombshell, right? Judas is betraying. He took the money. Watch out, Jesus, right? And Jesus knows, of course, he's God. But he's just like, Okay, you know, it's Passover. Everyone goes. And everyone's going about their business. Like, no one knows. And he get into the room and he says, look, one of you is going to betray me. And they all were seeing this sorrowful. And each one began to say, Lord, is it I? Right? Jesus says, one of you, twelve, is going to betray me. And they're all like shocked. Right? It seemed like, you know, they only say, it's Judas. We knew all along. Right? No, he, he blended right in. See, one of the things we've got to watch for not only is that pride of saying, I could never stumble, I'll never deny, I, I could never go down that road. The other one is the idea of hidden sin. Hidden sin. And you know what that is? What are the th- thoughts you're thinking that you don't share with anyone? Where are the places you go when no one's looking? What sites are you clicking on when no one's home? Right? And we end up living this double, double life. Judas went, right? I don't know. You know, it's funny because all the disciples were like, hey, where's Judas? Right? No. I mean, right? I mean, somehow he's communicating with the enemy. He's communicating with the Pharisees. And no one knows it. Actually, in John 12 tells us, and this he said, not that he cared for the poor. This is talking about Judas. But because he was a thief and had the money box, right? Judas was the treasurer. Well, God, watch out for those treasures. <laughs> we got a great one. I get myself in trouble. But Judas was taking the money and pocketing it. And no one knew. See, the path of walking away all begins in secret. See, it's not about who you betray to be. It's really who you are when no one's around. Guard your heart. Be careful because you think you might get away with it. And so they go through here. And uh, the disciples turn around and says, And he answered and said, He who dips his hand with me in the dish will betray me. So it's common in that time and they sit around and eat and you dip the bread into the, you know, 
And it's one of you guys. And the Son of Man indeed goes just as it is written of him. But woe to the man to whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be good, been good for that man if he had not been born. Right? So they're all like, is it I, Lord? And Jesus says, is one of you guys is going to dip with me. And finally Judas turns around. And Judas says, what? Is it I? You weasel. He knew. He knew his heart. He knew, right? He'd already gone. He has the money in his pocket. Well, why do you do that? Because he fooled everyone. And Jesus says to him, you have said it. Can I tell you something? You can fool everyone. But you can't fool who? God. And the Bible says that your sin will be revealed. Jesus says, yep. You know, they're all like, you know, Peter's like, is it I? Andrew, is it I? Right? Judas, is it I? Yeah, you said it. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he also will reap. For he who sows to the flesh will reap of the, of the flesh reap corruption. And he who sows to the Spirit will the Spirit reap everlasting life. Be serious, your sins will find you out. It will come out. So you're better off getting in front of it and confessing it. Luke says this, For nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known will come to light. Folks, in our lives, we're not above reproach. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Jude tells us that him who is able to keep her from falling. See, the key isn't to walk in your own strength, because you will stumble and you will fall. The secret is walking in the Lord. Keep your eyes on him. Stay close to him. Right? Lord, I know I'm going to wander. I know I will stray. Lord, help me stay close to you. And he does. And he will. Lord, keep me humble. How dare I look at the person down the street and look at them and say, I would never. Oh, oh by the grace of God, there goes you and me. Be thankful for his hand upon you. Listen to his voice and draw near to him. And he is able to keep you from falling. What an awesome God we serve. Why he loves us, I don't know. But amen, I'm so glad he does. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we see Judas, the betrayer, the phony, the fake. Oh, Lord, if it wasn't for your love, I would be those things too. Draw me close to you, Lord. Keep me ever so close. Hang on to me. Lord, keep my heart pure. Lord, help me keep short accounts to confess my sin before they grow. Lord, help me be reliant upon you for everything. Lord, we thank you for your love. So undeserved, but so freely given. Lord, we ask this in your name. Amen.